This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of CWK Live every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm your host, Dan Zare, thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. Well, hello, friends. It is happy and or finale eve. As Mary has let us know, hello, Mary. Hello, Minta. This is the way. It's CWK Day. Good to see you. And Jason is there as well. Hello there, Jason. Well, friends, I want to say, before anything else, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I know we're just a couple of days away, but I know the prep is happening. The turkey plans are marinating. Uh, Pies are getting ready to be baked. I literally spent an hour. uh, No, that's not true. It was about 45 minutes in line at Costco getting pumpkin pies. I mean... 100 people deep. I put on my Instagram story, Dan's Air CWK, and pretty crazy. It was really fun. Everybody was in a good mood and happy, and that was great. And it was a perfect prep to talk to all my happy friends here, my Star Wars people. Hello, Colby. Happy early Thanksgiving to you as well. Lori, hello. Good to see you, Lori. Hope things are going great. And Jamie is here. Hello, Jamie. Welcome back, my friend. Boy. The promise fire is not this crazy. It's just like it's getting dark in here. And so it just looks more like crazy than it actually is. Although, I don't know. That's okay. What are we going to talk about tonight? What are we going to talk about tonight? Well, of course, we're going to talk about the 11th episode of Andor. Top five moments from Andor's 10th episode. Oh, and that's not right. Let me fix that. Well, friends, let me put the correct one on there. I know it's here. I just made it not too long ago. Let's try again. There we go. Top five moments from Andor's 11th episode, Daughter of Ferex. That makes more sense. Yes. Daughter of Ferex. And we've got some Bring Them the Galaxy news. And then at the end of the show, I want to talk about what you are thankful for in the world of Star Wars. So now, let's take a look at what is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. Yes, indeed. What is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week? Well, I know the Qui-Gon Jinn legacy lightsabers have shipped because Mary posted in the CWK Cafe that she got hers. I got mine, too. I haven't got a chance to open it yet because we were doing some Thanksgiving uh, things after school today on our way home. But I'm very excited to have that little treat waiting for me, Mary. How is it? Please let us know in the comments. I can't wait to hear about the Qui-Gon Jinn Legacy Lightsaber. Qui-Gon, one of my favorite characters, and that is easily one of my favorite lightsaber designs as well. Okay, so Mary says it's very cool, and I believe you mentioned it was very heavy, which is neat. That, to me, it always makes it feel like it's a higher quality, so that's nice. So let's see what we got here. So a brand new Funko Pop which is the one of the posters, I believe, is it the circus style poster? No, that's not circus style. Well, maybe it is. It's uh, it's, it's one of the second posters, I believe, from A New Hope. And this is the Funko Pop. It's a brand new one of Luke. It has R2-D2 with it, and that's really fun. Mary says, this will complete Chaz's cosplay as Qui-Gon. Well, that's cool. That's cool. See, and with this beard I got going on, I'll have to dress up like Obi-Wan and then Chaz and I can walk around for a little bit. That would be fun. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. Although I would be an older Obi-Wan with this beard, but actually Chaz could probably outbeard me. All right, so I don't know what's going to outshare this. I mean, look at this. This is a, this was just announced today, actually. I got an update about this a couple of hours ago from our friends at Lucasfilm. There are two gaming chairs that have just been announced. They are from a company called Secret Lab, these gaming chairs, I believe, are on sale very, very soon. Hey, Brian, what's up, man? Good to see you. Brian is here on the show. I'm looking at this press release to see when these chairs are coming out. Oh, gosh, I don't really see an announcement here. Um, but I know that they are they are very nice. The link is actually on Coffee with Kenobi's Website as well as StarWars.com, but you've gotten an Imperial one and you've got a Stormtrooper one. 
Again, good to see you, Brian. And Mary says, that is a good plan. She has to be Force Ghost Qui-Gon. Ooh, nice. That's clever. That's clever. So anyway, those chairs are really slick, and I, they've got a lot of great options on them as well. Speaking of fun and slick and lots of options, look at Pictionary Air. It's a Star Wars edition with Star Wars clues and things you can add to your Pictionary games, and you can draw it in the air like a Jedi and it will reflect or it will mirror back onto the TV via Bluetooth technology. So that is really fun. So much fun. Minta says, I would want one of those chairs when I'm working at home. Exactly. That is a great idea. I like that. All right. Pictionary Air, Star Wars. Now, here's some jewelry that has been um, shared with us. This is from a company called, let me pull up the exact name here for you. Where is it? There's not only is it, by the way, not only are there these options, but there is also some options for uh, Ahsoka Tano jewelry as well. Really, really nice looking stuff. Uh, Brian says those chairs need the th three levers for hyperspace. That would be cool. That would be so cool. Okay, so this jewelry is from a company called uh, Girls Crew. I'm not familiar with that, but uh, I looked through it. Some really nice quality stuff there. Uh, Mary says, is that Girls Crew? Yes, it is. Uh, these are the rings from Enzo. These are the I Love You, I Know in Orabesh. These are the new silicone rings. Really, really fun. Boy, I wonder if I could get Deanna to wear the I Love You and I could wear the I Know. That would be fun. Hey, Andrew is here. What's up, Andrew? Andrew, happy to finally be able to join. Andrew, it's great to have you, my friend. Really nice to have you. Mary says a girl's crew has some really nice pieces, so that's good. I'll go back to that so we can look at them again. And then back to the Enzo Rings ones. I love that Andrew is here. Andrew, it's great to see you. Last week, we had a new friend join us from the CWK uh, audience as well, which is always wonderful to see. All right, speaking of wonderful to see, look at this Hallmark ornament. It's not completely new, but it is being featured this week for Bring Home the Galaxy. It's, of course, the Mandalorian saying goodbye to Grogu. And it's it's really, uh, really sweet, really touching. A great likeness, too. Now, look at this. With the Dark Trooper underfoot, Luke Skywalker has just finished uh, performing his sushi with his amazing green lightsaber, but this is a hallmark ornament of Luke Skywalker. And I absolutely love this one. And Andrew Mary says, welcome as well. And, that, and that's what, that's the norm around here, Andrew. Everybody who joins us in the CWK Cafe, which is our Facebook group, or on CWK Live is always welcoming and wonderful. And that's one of the reasons why this community is so great. Now look at this. This is uh, Up to Snow Good. This is from... Shop Disney. Disney has done a lot of great things, and I'm going to post some more stuff this week and next week on Instagram. But they've got some great Ewok Christmas merchandise, and I thought this was really fun. The milk bottle and then the plate. Up to snow good, it says. Minta says, I have one of those Enzo rings, super comfortable. And yes, I have the Ahsoka one. Well, of course, I would expect nothing less. They sent me the first set a few years ago, the first six, and I love them. They're really fun. I wear them to celebration sometimes. You knew I had to post this. If you've been watching along on Twitter or Facebook, on Instagram, either me uh, personally or my or coffee with Kenobi, then you know that Columbia sent me these amazing, this amazing parka, Clone Wars parka, and this ball cap. Uh, it goes on sale, I believe, December 4th. It's either the 4th or the 2nd. Uh, let me check this, actually. I swear I actually am usually prepared for these things. But there's just a lot. This is just an exciting week. A lot of stuff going on, not only with Star Wars, but with family things, fun family things and Thanksgiving. Okay, so yeah, here we go. I got it right here. These are all coming out on Friday, December 2nd at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Time at Columbia.com slash Star Wars. You can find a link to it on Coffee with Kenobi. Here's a couple of pictures. 
of uh, the the jacket that they sent me it's really warm it's it's a huge jacket but it's great for when it's really really cold and that can certainly get really warm in illinois and the picture on the right i only took and that's what it looked like i was a mannequin because it does look like that but because the jacket had the sleeves have thumb holes and that was a big uh hit with mason i'm not really a thumb hole person but hey, it's fun. It's comfortable. It makes sure it's, it's really nice when you're sledding or, or playing in the snow, I would think, too. And then next is a close-up of me with the hat, which is cool. And I was actually going to wear it tonight on the show, but I did not bring it down to the studio with me. So that'll be something to look forward to next time. So there you have it. Thanks, for everybody, for the fun comments on the little photo shoot that Deanna and I did just for the heck of it. That was very entertaining. So there you go. Columbia, all every every winter, I always look forward to whatever Columbia is going to have for Star Wars jackets because they always do such a great, great job. But this one is no exception because they've got highlighting stuff from season one of the Clone Wars, which I love so much. What a unique thing. All right, let's do it. Let's talk about the 11th episode of Andor, Daughter of Ferret. So I just realized that Cyril isn't on my list, uh, although there's certainly a really memorable scene with Cyril that I could bring up. I just didn't put it on my list, but that doesn't mean it's not good. There's a lot to choose from here. This the, the penultimate episode of season one of Andor. Of course, tomorrow is the finale. We need to talk about Dara Ferrix first, a very powerful episode, as they all have been. Uh, Cassian's mother, Marva, has passed away, and there's some fallout from that. There's a lot of loss and tragedy with all the characters in this, which we talked about in great detail on Coffee with Kobe this week. And I was joined by Corey Club, the co-creator and my co-host on Pour Over, along with Tom Gross. And then Jeff McGee of Marvin Dog Media and Star Wars Splash Page joined me to talk about it in detail as well. Mary says, Cyril is in my honorable mention. And Kelly is here. Hello, Kelly. He says, Mita Oko, I wonder how comfy they were. I'll get them now. Thanks. Awesome. And Kelly... Great to see you again. Another new face. That's always awesome. Let's cheer it for all of our new friends who joined us today on CWK Live. Number five. Let's go into this. Let's do number five. Number five for me is Let's Call It War. I could just pick five moments from the conversation with Luthen and Saw very easily. But the way that Saw is just so interesting. He's chomping at the bit before he was reluctant to join in this war. And to help out Anto Krieger. And now he realizes that Anto Krieger is basically going to be served up to protect the rebellion, even though Anto Krieger does not know this. The differences in philosophy between Luthen and Saw are interesting. Luthen is legitimately not sure what to describe everything going on with Anto Krieger and the fact that he has to sacrifice him. And Saw just says, let's call it war. He just breaks it down. This is There is nothing good about this. It's war. Although I think it's fair to say Saw likes war. Well, maybe that isn't fair. Maybe it's not that he likes war, it's just that he has decided that is the only option for him for the rest of his life. And it's sad, but he's a very tragic character. But I like that line, let's call it war, so that's my number five. Minta's number five, Mon Mothma and uh, Vel having an, another visit with each other before they part. Despite having different paths, they still want to help each other in some shape or form. And that's true. They certainly do. Number five for Jamie is Linus contacting Cyril. Dare I say he is a fun favorite of mine from the early part of the series? No, I know. I know what you're saying. I think a lot of people feel similarly about that. Colby, I love how the episode started with Cass and uh, Melshi climbing. Awesome continuation of the climb theme. It's true. Yeah, that's that was very tense. But it also wasn't. It was very well done the way that they uh, presented that sequence. Jason's five, Cassian and Melshi finally escaping Narkeen of five. Finally, and of course, there's still a few moments where you're just a little nervous too. Brian's five is Cassian and Melshi hanging on the cliff. It seemed to mirror everything, everyone watching these episodes. That's a great, that's a great call. Yes, this whole one is very tense, beginning to end. And us hanging by the seat of our pants or by our knuckles uh, is definitely a good metaphor. Mary's five, the alien fisherman who captured Cassian and Melshi in their nets. Definitely had to have captions for the scene. The quad jumper Easter egg from The Force Awakens was fun. And those two were hard to understand. I had to watch it with the captions, and that helped. But yeah, it was an interesting scene. Number five for Lori is Cyril's phone call, then stealing from his mom's safe. 
that was an interesting episode because he'd feel very much like a teenager in that sequence, although he's definitely got some very adult motives and uh, execution of his beliefs. But yeah, he he sneaks into his mom's safe. It was interesting. I wonder what's going to happen with Cyril in the next episode. But let's go on to number four, shall we? Number four for me is the Luthan Panic. Look, I know there's a lot of great stuff that happened with Luthan, but if he doesn't seem a little bit scared or nervous, I mean, some people have said that he didn't doesn't look nervous at all and he's calm under pressure, and that's a fair uh, observation or breakdown. To me, I took it a little bit differently. I thought he looked a little panicked. And honestly, if he's not a little worried, because he is caught off guard even though he's clearly prepared, if he's not a little bit worried, then why are we? then why would we be worried? But I felt like... I thought he was going to die. I really thought Luthen was going to die in this, in this, at the end of the eleventh episode, daughter of Ferrix. I was really relieved that he didn't. I hope that he hangs on, but the fact that he was a little nervous, uh, combined with the the gravity and the surprise of that scene, made me really nervous for Luthen so much so. Okay, let's see. Number four for Minta is the same as my five. Let's call it war. That was a hard burn to saw. Props to Luthen. Yeah, it was that that whole those two those two together. Their scenes are really nice, really well done. And I wish that we got to see more of them because they really come to life together. They're again they have very different philosophies, but also they want the same thing. I think. Number four for Jason Melshi's resolve to expose the Empire and Narkina Five. If only there was a group of like-minded people he could team up with to fight against the Imperials. If only. Like, maybe if they had a couple Jedis with them. If only. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Mary's number four is Mon and Vel's visit with Leda uh, and her friends in the background doing the traditional Chandril and chant. Genevieve O'Reilly is killing it in these emotional scenes. She's a powerhouse. She is an absolute powerhouse. Kobe says the two Fisher aliens, what a couple of decent dudes. Yes, even though it was super unclear uh, that they were doing it and why they were doing it, because they were hard to understand, but that was very much a relief that they were there. Jamie's four. Caston being the rock that helps his partner survive and escape. They're leaving. I thought they were doomed once captured in those nets. I did too. I was so frustrated. And plus, like, the the nets were, like, all sticky, much more. It was obviously, like, webbing. Like, it reminded me of Spider-Man, the first... Spider-Man, I remember thinking his webbing was really sticky and all that, which it should be. It is Spider-Man, or it is a web. So yes, very good. Well, that's number four. Let's jump into number three. And if I'm going too fast, feel free to raise your hand and say, hey, Dan, wait, I want to share mine. You can absolutely do that in the comments section at any point. So number three for me is Luthen's Maneuver, the the little the, the twirl. I don't know what the exact combat expression is in those lasers that come out and basically saw those ties in half like laser them in half that maneuver only works because of the panic before to me because it sets it up and makes it more exciting and thrilling but it's a great sequence and to see new flight maneuvers in star wars or new weapons or ways to get away from ties was great blowing up the tractor beam on that imperial cruiser uh it was then a rester cruiser and then escaping, hitting the light speed was great. Thank goodness they don't have um, light speed tracking. That was something that fell flat for me in the um, sequel trilogy, so I'm glad we don't have that in this. Let's see what everybody else has here. Uh, Jamie's four was Cassian being the rock helps his partner survive. Oh, wait, I said that already. Sorry about that. Uh, Lori's next one is Luthen's firefight with the Empire ship was amazing. The bullets remind me of whistling birds. Oh, that's interesting. Brian's four was the Fisher aliens choosing to release Cassian and Melshi. Excellent. Minta's three, Luthen's fighting skill despite being in a state of panic, he was able to take out multiple ties. Not to mention his layers coming out of his ship. My jaw just dropped. It was a cool scene. Colby's three, the kindness of the Ferrex residents to be, especially Brazo. I love Brazo. I hope we get more of him. He's a cool character and he's very compassionate. Jason's three is Diego Luna's ability to convey grief and loss with just a facial expression. That is a good call, Jason. And he very much is able to do that. He's an excellent actor. Lori's three. 
Mon sadness and having to offer up her daughter. Great acting. Extremely powerful. She is certainly uh, worthy of an Emmy nomination for this series. Uh, Jamie's three, Marvis passing in B2's Compassion for Her Loss. Love that Barraza recognized the morning and offered to spend the night there. Also like the concept of the bick of the bricking. Yeah, that was beautiful. That was quite symbolic and interesting. And we talked about that a little bit on Coffee with Kenobi this week, but I really like that as well. Okay, I think I've got everybody's three that's joining us live. Oh, here we go. Mary's three. Luthan and Saw's encounter. Luthan is not playing around. He knows they have to sacrifice a group, but not willing for Saw's group to be a part of it. He knows Saw can connect Luthan to the rebels. The flight out of there was so cool. Can we save flying Inquisitor lightsaber ship? I mean, that's certainly what I thought of. So I, I, I hear you. Brian's three. Luthan is just full of party tricks. We think he's cornered by the Imperial ship and he seems to lure them and then kicks them in the teeth. That is quite a good description, too. Yeah, he's he's crafty. I can't wait. I hope we get a lot more of Luthan, that's for sure. But let's go to number two. Number two for me is when Mel, she says, people have to know what's going on. People have to know what's going on. And if I'm, and I could be mistaken, but I feel like he says it multiple times, doesn't he? And the reason I like this so much is it'll be very easy to run out and escape and hide or just try to live a new life or try to heal or move on from this horrific experience on Narkina 5. But it, it's the opposite. It's more like, no, we've got to do what's right. We've got to let the galaxy know what the Empire's doing, how they're treating people, refusing to be suppressed, refusing to let tyranny spit in your eye and, you know, kick sand in your face to use an old uh, beach reference. They used to have these great comic books where they'd show like this guy and he'd be on the beach with some girl and then they would, some bully would come by and kick sand in his face and then he'd like work out or something and then he'd be all strong and buff. It just, that reminds me of that. It's more like, I'm not letting sand get kicked in my face by the Empire anymore. I'm letting everyone know. But it's very resolute and very serious. It's it's very, it doesn't feel like fiction in that moment. It feels like reality. And I think that's one of the reasons why Andor works so well. It doesn't feel like fiction sometimes. It really feels like an urgent, important thing that's going on in the real world. And that is because the writing and the acting, the directing, the production of the series. So that's my number two. Number two for Minta says, poor B. He felt so lost without Marva, probably one of the few droids to express grief. You know what? I noticed that too, and I don't know if I said on Coffee with Coming or not, but he really does express legitimate grief and loss. Jason Cyril's video call with Sergeant Most, which was very interesting, and the, the smelting was going on, which distracted everything. Mary's B, uh, number two is B2. The poor little guy has lost everyone he loves. Seeing the opening scene of Marva's death through his receptor was so good. It was hard. At first, it was hard to know what was going on. Then you're realizing, you're like, oh, no. And Colby agrees with you. The point of view shot from B. I didn't know what was happening until he saw his eye. And then he started shaking when he heard that Marvel was gone. Powerful. Very well done. Just really, really uh, original and clever idea. Number two for Jason and Cyril's video call with Linus. I appreciate the humor of it. Otherwise, somber episode in this series. They do interject a little bit of that, too. And I like that. His video call is like, it's interesting because this gentleman that is his partner, uh, he is, he's very loyal. He's very, very loyal to, to Cyril. Um, and he's sort of played a little bit like silly, but he seems very resolute and not someone that I think you would want to cross. I don't think. Uh, Sergeant Mosk. Yeah. Linus Mosk. Lori says the phone call with Andor was such a sad moment at the end. Yeah, it was. And the way he played that was, oof, awful. Gave me chills. Jamie saw and Luther in the back and forth to accept the trap is set and there could be no change to the plan. Building trust through trading ac accusations qu was quite interesting. And you just can't, it just feels like they can't last forever. And I don't know what their history uh, is ultimately going to share about that. But I agree. Brian, similar. Luther and Saw's conversation, we don't really we really learned that they don't trust each other, even though they are trying to be on the same side. I agree, and yet 
they very much do. They don't trust each other's maybe style or decisions, but I feel like they would never betray each other. I just, I mean, I just don't think that they would. I don't know why. Just something about the way Luthen's saying, you know, you know, he can't really harm me. You could, but I'd feel like he would protect him for who knows what their history is like again as friends. But also, there's something there about uh, there's something there's sort of a strained brotherhood between these two. I don't know. I hope we get to see more of it because it's it's really compelling. I think. Okay. Well. Let's go into number one. The, our number one from our top five moments from Daughter of Ferrix for me is Confession. When Mon Mothmas is sitting with her cousin Val for a good a couple of moments, a few minutes, about being short 400,000 credits, what she has to do. She can't, she almost can't even bring herself to say it specifically out loud. Although we certainly know, and Vel knows what's going on. The pain, the anguish that like it is, it is killing her from the inside. It's so sad. It's so terrible. I feel like again, as a parent, it's even amplified because you just can't imagine ever doing anything to hurt your kids or put them in harm's way. You just, it just seems un- unfathomable. And the fact that this woman who is a good woman and a good mother I think the fact that she feels like that's her only option shows you how dire this is. But I also think it's important to have Mon Mothma be vulnerable. And she's always just, you know, makes these good choices and she's just strong and confident all the time, but never has any doubts or makes any mistakes. Then she's not relatable. So I don't like what happened, but I like that she is human and, her confession is just very, very tragic and heartfelt and kind of Shakespearean. So a, a wonderful sequence. Absolutely wonderful. And one for Colby, the the fond or the whole scene, just so exhilarating. It was. It very much was. Number one for me to the end of the episode, seemed to foreshadow what happened to Cassie in Rogue One. Yes. She gave me chills. It made me feel a little sad. You know, I know some people have been watching Rogue One since this. I think I'm going to wait till after season two. Uh, I think I hopefully I can wait that long because I it'll be interesting to see what Cassian is like after that. Then one for Mary Cassian after learning about Marva's death and Melshi leaving. That final scene of Cassian looking out over the ocean and then turning his head gave such a rogue one vibe. So well done with the visuals and the music, so haunting. Yeah, that's you're the second person to bring up that flashback see or that kind of foreshadowing with the ocean. It was really nice. Powerful. Number one for Jason is Luthen's skill under pressure from the Imperial Cruiser, and the Fondor is a super cool ship. Yeah, and a very interesting name. It almost sounds like a, a dessert. Want some Fondor? Sure. Uh, Mary's uh, says, Mean to we definitely have the same vibes with this episode. Yeah, you two are on the same path for sure. Lori's number one is the death of Marva and B2's overwhelming grief. Everyone telling B2 to pull together. I keep hoping. Marva is in the tunnel under the hotel and she saves Bix. I hope Marva faked her death. Boy, that would be awesome. Brian's are one is Luthen's ship. What else is it hiding? Yeah, what other kind of gadgets and gizmos are there? And, and how cool of a Lego ship would that be if they ever decided to make that? Very, very interesting. Well, I think you know. By the way, thank you, everybody, for sharing your wonderful list. I, I love that we join these together. We talk Star Wars again. You're sharing this. That I mean, not only is the people who are tuning in live, but the, it's on our YouTube channel, Coffee with Kenobi's YouTube channel, which I hope you are all subscribing to. Every little bit helps. But the audio feed of this goes out to so many people. So many people are hearing your voice. You have a voice in the Star Wars community, and it's immediately getting out there because of CWK Live and all of you taking the time to watch the shows and prepare your lists and join me. I love it. It makes this show so good. This show does not happen without all of you. So thank you for pouring your heart and soul into it. It means a lot, and it really makes this show what it is. Absolutely. All right, let's see. Jamie's number one was Luthen's escape, particularly final laser beams and spinning out to take the two ties out. I thought he was done for since we really don't know what his future is in this series or beyond. Always one step ahead, always prepared. He's like kind of like Batman, isn't he? Let's hope that that continues. Let's hope. So next week, the last episode from season one of Andor, episode 12. 
who knows what it is going to be called or what's going to happen. But we do know it's going to be something we are going to be talking about for a long time, especially here on Coffee with Kenobi. So now let's go ahead and jump into Ask Dan Z. Colby is too kind. He says the CWK community is second time. Well, thank you. Thank you, bud. And thank you. Our congratulations to you on the Colby cast and hitting more and more milestones, both of you and uh, Force Ghost Conversations and a lot of uh, newer podcasts out there just doing so good and, and really are such sparks of positivity in this, in this Star Wars community. So thank you, Colby, and congratulations to you. While we're get, sitting in here thinking about what you want to ask me, Star Wars, podcast related, what have you. I want to say thank you to all of you. I'm thankful for Star Wars because it has brought all of you into my life. As fans of Star Wars, um, creating an amazing atmosphere in this community that I'm happy to be a part of. Because of you, I get to have this awesome Star Wars life and have these amazing Star Wars friends. So I'm very, very thankful for all of you. So thankful for you. And I also... Would be remiss if I didn't say a special shout out to the members of the CWK Alliance. Members of the CWK Alliance helped me to do so many things with this show. You also get something out of it as well. You get an exclusive video and audio podcast every single week. Uh, you get access to private uh, Zoom calls and uh, with me, and we just have a lot of fun together. So not only are you doing that, but with that exclusive podcast, CWK Pourover. But you also are helping to contribute to the St. Jude Children's Hospital because 15%, I'm sorry, 10% of your monthly contributions go directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital and helping out those amazing children and their families. Mary says, very thankful for you and this group. So many good friends here now. Well, thank you. That's so cool. I appreciate that. You've done so much, Mary. You've been so awesome. So I can't wait to hang out with you. And a lot of our friends... Next summer on the Galactic Star Cruiser. That's right. You can go with me on the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser at Walt Disney World, June 12th to the 14th. It's going to be me, Tom Gross, Corey Club, um, and so many others that are in this community. And I can't wait. There are limited spots available. You have to go to coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel and tell them you're with Dan's there and the Coffee with Kenobi group. And they will make sure that we're all together as is as much as is humanly possible. Colby says, just following the leader. That's you. You are the leader. Well, thanks, man. Uh, I appreciate that. I hope I, I am one of the leaders that survives the Death Star Trench Run. How about that? Brian says, thank you, Dan, for your time and energy and making it so much fun. Hey, man, my pleasure. My pleasure. Jason, what, what's, what's my favorite Thanksgiving side dish or dessert? Well, a couple of years ago, two years ago, we did a uh, pour over top five um, favorite Thanksgiving dishes. It was really, really funny. We talked about that a lot. Uh, my favorite side dish is sweet potatoes, I think. I mean, I love mashed potatoes and gravy, but I feel like that's kind of like one and one A with turkey, but I love sweet potatoes. Love it. How about you? Have you ever had a chance? Have you ever heard of any changes to Star Cruiser uh, Cruise itinerary? I haven't. I haven't. I, I feel like it's still so kind of newish. It's only been open since, what, February or March? So it's probably too early, but I'm sure at some point it makes sense to get people on it multiple times. They might change the this, the itinerary. I hope they do, but I can tell you right now what they have is absolutely extraordinary. Okay. Well, that is going to do it for this week's CWK Live. Tomorrow, of course, is the season finale of, uh, yeah, of Andor. Very excited for that. I think the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special comes out tomorrow too, so it's going to be a really fun day to be on Disney Plus. Get that, get the uh, turkey stuff ready to go. I know that at our house, uh, Dean always cooks the turkey the night before and lets it simmer and stew all day. And then tomorrow, and then on Thanksgiving Day, we just heat it up. And it's amazing and really uh, moist and juicy and awesome. Oh, can't wait. I love Thanksgiving. And of course, then we're jumping into Christmas. You probably can't tell, but behind me is... Oh, look at how my lightsaber's all lit up blue. Huh. I never. I don't know if I've ever noticed that before. Does that always happen on live? I don't know. Fun. Um, so I'm going to have this tree 
lit up next week for the show. Of course, got to get the holiday theme on, don't we? LJ says, hi, Dan. Bye, Dan. What's up, man? Uh, have I seen the new lightsabers in Savvy's Workshop? Well, Brian, what do they have? I know they've got Obi-Wan Kenobi and Invaders from the Obi-Wan Kenobi Disney Plus series. Qui-Gon Jinn's, of course, uh, which I have. Uh, I don't know, but let me know. What are they? Very happy Thanksgiving to you. Have a wonderful week as well. Me to may the force be with you. Colby, thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving to you. So, Brian, yeah, in the CWK Cafe, if there are new lightsabers at Savvy's Workshop, let me know because... You know I love me some legacy lightsabers. They're great. And you're all great, too. Thank you so much. Enjoy that turkey. Watch some football. Hang out with your family and friends. Tell the people that you love that you love them as much as you can. And remember, this is the podcast you're looking for. See you next time, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. Move along. Move along.